Akumulácia perúča s príbranskom elektránom, formiraná je zgradňom na súte bráne perúča na pregradnom profilu rieke Cetine, 14 km úzvodno od Cíňa. Perúča je byla prvá naša akumulácia u krškom tlu, kde je prílikom pristúpania i stražným radovima trebalo u stručným krugovima sladati nevjericu u mogućnost njena ozbrojenja. 32 godine korištenja govore o izuzetno uspješnom projektu. Nasuta brana Peruča visoka je u najvećem presjeku 63 metra, duga 450 metara u kruni, sastoji se od uske glinene jezgre u sredini presjeka i uzvodne i nizvodne otporne zone od nasutog kamena vapnenca. U vrijeme kada je projektirana bila je to najviša nasuta brana u našoj zemlji. Usporom od 60 metara brana ostvaruje volumen od 541 milijun metara kubičnih kojim obavlja vodno izravnanje za korištenje energetskog potencijala cetine koji iznosi više od 2,7 milijardi kilovat sati, a ujedno zaštićuje od poplava nizvodno Hrvatačko i Sinjsko polje. My name is Mark Ray. Um, I'm a colonel in the Royal Marines from the United Kingdom, uh, and I'm coming back to southern Croatia, uh, an area where I worked as a United Nations military observer 20 years ago uh, during the Croatian War for Independence. As a military officer, you always want to deploy on operations. Uh, I had just come back from uh, from one in Northern Ireland and was eager to go on another one and uh, you know uh, the TV seemed to show that there was quite a lot of action going on in Yugoslavia and it seemed like a good place to go and work for the UN and a very interesting role as well um, you know working as a military observer at that time there was no there were no military observers in scene but what was happening I mean I, I wasn't aware of this at the time but clearly what was happening was there were a lot of reports of ceasefire violations along the senior part of um, the pink zones and uh, and Perucha was obviously a big issue for the Croatians because they were lobbying the Security Council virtually every day saying, you know, this is outrageous, they're using, uh, the, the Serbs are holding the water and, uh, you know, it's a humanitarian disaster and the UN should be stopping this. So the UN decided, well, we need to establish a military observer office in that area to cover all of these issues and we were the team that were going down to set it up. So we established the, the, the office from scratch. In principle, we were allocated UN vehicles and a map and a, and a radio and uh, given the mission to go and establish a, an office in Sine and spread peace and goodwill and harmony. Um, and that was about as detailed as our mission was defined at that point. My recollections of uh, this part of Croatia are, you know, every house has the roof burnt out, uh, every house has bullet and shell holes in it and windows burnt, uh, every house has either the Serbian sort of cross with four C's painted on the side or Ustasha or the big U painted on the side. I would imagine that's all gone now. <laughs>
Blackco, how are you? Fine, thank you, Mark. Blackco. Oh, Mark. How the devil are thank you? Welcome, Mark. And you. Welcome to Croatia. How are you? Fine, fine. How thank have you, you been? How are you? I haven't seen you for ages. Uh, I'm so lovely. You look fantastic. Yeah, thank you, and you also. What a lovely day. Lovely day. I've never seen the water level this low, ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> I first met Colonel Bandalo. He was the liaison officer for the uh, 126 Croatian Brigade uh, based in Sin, which is was controlling uh, this area. And uh, he was effectively our point of contact, the United Nations point of contact for the region. Um, so I met him almost every day to discuss all sorts of issues that were of interest to us as United Nations forces, uh, particularly ceasefire violations which were happening all across the front line on an almost daily basis. Um, but also discussions about, uh, about the dam here and uh, the impact that it was having on the people downstream. His special mission was that he would control the level of water in the water. The water was constantly on the level of 361 meters, which was actually destroyed the whole bridge. And when we knew that in the morning the bridge was 30 tons of explosive, and this big level of water, we knew what it meant. Brana bi bila uništena u cijelosti, a i cijeli nizvodni prostor. Markova uloga u tom dijelu zapravo je bila posebna i mi smo imali sreću da je takav čovjek bio vojni promatrač i da je prepoznao što to znači. Znao je što to znači za budućnost jednog prostora i znao je da prvi puta jedan se ovakav objekat koristi u vojne svrhe. On kao vojnik, kao profesionalac, kao kraljevski marinac, on to nije htio prihvatiti. Za iskazanu i svjedočenu hrabrost i unaštvo u spriječavanju rušenja brane i peruća odlikuje se umirovljeni brigadir Mark Nikolas Krej, predsjednik Republike Hrvatske Ivo Jesipović. My good friend, Mr. Matson from the Croatian Electricity Company and the manager of this dam for years and years. <laughs> if he wasn't so passionate about the dam and tried to make a stupid soldier understand what the problem was, then, you, you know, what happened wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Jedno ljetno poslije podne mene je Vlatko uputio da se pokušam kontaktirati u Unmo tim ovdje u Košutama. Ja sam došao ovdje malo sa strepnjom jer ne znam od koga ću susreti jer te ljude nisam ovaj poznavao. I ušao sam unutra zatekao jednog mladiša tako malo raskomoćenog jer je bilo jako ovaj vruće. Razgovarali smo, rekao sam da mi treba podatak o razine akumulacije gore. I on kroz nekakvu priču je rekao da će bi pokušati to ovaj, saznati i javiti idućeg dana. Moram priznati da nisam baš u prvom trenutku u to vjerovao jer susretnete mladoga čovjeka nekako postupio sam malo sa nepovjerenjem. Međutim, idućega dana kad je došao drugi dan u moj ured i donio razinu akumulacije, nekako shvatio sam da je to pravi put, da ćemo uspjeti surađivati i da ćemo nešto ovaj, zajednički napraviti. In August 1992, the water level in the dam was right at the top of the spill, spillway gate because no water had been released, probably for the best part of a year. Uh, and it was autumn, and in the autumn rains, the, the, the rainfall is coming down from the hills and continuing to fill the dam. So there's severe risk that, uh, that the dam is going to overflow.
I, this position here is, uh, is down beneath the dam. You can see the dam uh, up there in front of you, the hydroelectric plant at the bottom of the dam. Uh, and to the right is the, is the spillway that the gate releases water through uh, when, it's, uh, when it's open. Um, as military observers, we were obviously allowed to walk all over this area and we used this bridge. The Serbs had, had some positions down here, actually. Um, but on the Croatian side, none of the workers from the dam could ever come here during that time because it was occupied by the Serbs. And uh, so, to a certain extent, we were the eyes of, of, of the dam workers and reported the information uh, as we read, for example, the water level uh, to them but uh, they could only look at the dam from afar, uh, from the top of the hill position where they could, with binoculars, see what was going on here, but could never actually come themselves. Mi smo ovome lijepom okruženju koje je sada mirnodovski lijepo okruženo kaduljon, vriskon i ostalim stvarima 90. i 91. godine bili kao radnici hidroelektrane Peruća, kad je ona ugrožena, poslani da ovdje obavljamo svoj posao, naziremo hidroelektranu Peruća, a kako smo bili u uniformi, prešli smo u 126. brigadu, pa smo dobili zadatak da budemo brigadni izviđači. Imali smo daleko ozore, kanočale, kako mi kažemo, koji su povećavali prilično veliko, to su specijalni ruski, nabavili su ih naši emigranti, ko zna kako, mi smo mogli vidjeti ko šeta po brani, mogli smo čak vidjeti je li obrijan ili nije. Ja sam vam rekao da je brana minirana, a vi znate da sam ja vojnik. Ja kad vučem poteze, vučem poteze koje ne se znači da matiraju protivnik. Prijetili su da će ako ne ostvare svoje ciljeve u vojnom smislu, srušiti branu. To je bilo toliko veliko iznenađenje, mi smo bili emocionalno vezani uz to i tražili smo od svjetske javnosti, mi smo naime tada bili razočarani, kako svijet nije reagirao, budući da smo govorili o tome, opasnih objekata, najmanje ima Hrvatska, najviše ih ima svijet, ako se dopusti ratovanje oko tih objekata, ucijenjivanje, svijet iđe u nešto nepoznato. room of the dam. Um, this is where all the mechanisms are controlled from. That's the actual control room there. And in 1992, when I first came here, uh, all of this was destroyed. Um, and when I say destroyed, it was, it was just a mess. There was uh, broken glass everywhere. All the windows were broken. All the cabinets and the mechanisms were broken. Uh, it was dirty, it was dusty, it was muddy. Inside the control room, all of the glass dials had been smashed um, and it was quite obvious that nothing was working. Um, I came down here first just to orientate myself, uh, understand where all the bits were and as I had more and more conversations with Mr. Matsan and he explained what various parts of the dam did, I would then come down the following day and just familiar, familiarise myself with, uh, with what he was talking about. Pošto sam pronašao dokumentaciju, volio bih pročitati Marku kao sjećanje na taj period, pa evo jedan pasus iz tog mog izvještaja. Kako iz pogona Haje Peruća priliku napuštanja objekta nije evakuirana kompletna dokumentacija, zamoli smo majora Greja da nam je donese. Kasno jedne večeri dovezao je puno vozilo dokumentacije. To su uglavnom bile šeme i nacrti. Zamolio me da to nikome ne spominjemo jer je on prema pravilima Unmoa napravio već dovoljno prekršaja. It was very early in my time here and I was still trying to understand what we were allowed to do and what we were not allowed to do. It seemed to me at that time that it was very important that Mr. Matsan had these documents and I think it was right to give them to him. Kad doša gospodin Grey moramo priznati Osobno rečeno, i mi smo imali određene predrasude prema časnicima iz Umprofora, engleskim časnicima, britanskim i tako dalje, ali i gospodin Grey je sigurno imao neke upute, predrasude i tako dalje. Ono što je kod gospodina Greja za nas izazvalo jedno poštovanje, što je on na temelju situacije 
koja je bila na terenu kad bi se uvjerio da su tehnički problemi iznad vojni postupao časno. The United Nations itself did not understand the uh, fully the concept of neutrality and what it meant and how it clashed with humanitarian missions and things like that. Um, and we were still all of us still finding our feet. Uh, and Perucha was one of the big tests of, of, of that. Uh, I certainly believe that the things, the actions that I took at the time uh, were in my mind neutral. Uh, some may have perceived them to be assisting the Croatian side. I, I didn't see it that way at all. I saw it as, uh, as a neutral act, a humanitarian act, working on behalf of the United Nations. And I have absolutely no doubt that the actions that I took Uh, would have been supported by the United Nations at the time. Uh, I just recognise that perhaps right at that time in 1992, if I'd asked my direct boss and his direct boss, look, do you have any problem with me collecting documents and handing them back to the manager of the dam? They would have gone, hmm, we'll have to think about that for a minute, we'll come back to you, and it might have taken a month or two for, for, for a decision to come down. So... Um, I think a lot easier just to do it and uh, worry about the consequences later. Ono što se nekad kaže zvonka tišina, tako je ovdje bila ta opasna neutralnost. Ako je taj časnički sustav tako neutralan, onda je pitanje njegove srhe. Ovdje neutralnost je značila suradnju sa zlom. Tu smo vidjeli da je gospodin Grey možda malo iskočio iz te neutralnosti prema istinitim događajima i to nas je ohrabrilo bilo. I never for a moment while I was here felt that I was anything other than neutral uh, and, and the test if you like was that whichever side I was on they would always accuse me of being on the other side so when I was on this side I was always accused by the, the Croatian soldiers uh, of, of siding with the Serbs and protecting the Serbs And the moment I crossed over the line to their side, they would say, you, you, you know, you're a Croat at heart. You're, you, uh, and, and that for me meant that I must be being neutral, uh, which was great. But in my mind, I was there to uh, serve the interests of peace, uh, not necessarily serve the political or military interests of one side or the other. What se zapravo dogoditi sa Perućom? Za razliku od prijašnjih dana, kada se mjerilo koliko još centimetra nedostaje da se dosegne kritična kota na jezeru Peruća koje iznosi 360 metara nadmorske visine, danas je izmjereno 360,73 cm, a to znači da je počelo odbrojavanje dana, a možda i sati, kada će 560 milijuna kubika vode probiti branu i uništiti se pred sobom. Once it became obvious that water had to be released from the spillway. Um, I had in my mind that I was going to take the opportunity if I could. We came here to the dam uh, to measure the water level as, as, as we had done every day and the Serb soldiers were very comfortable with us coming over to this part of the dam because we did it every day. That day in, in, in August, uh, August 92, I, I came here, I walked into the building. Um, there were two Serb soldiers just sat lounging around on chairs inside there. They were obviously tasked with just monitoring uh, the spillway gate. Um, Kalashnikovs on their laps, drinking coffee, smoking, chatting. Uh, and I walked in, grabbed the stick, pulled it out and watched the spillway gate uh, fly open. Um, and the water pour down uh, the river. generated a little bit of excitement among, amongst the Serbs, not surprisingly. A couple of them jumped up, nose to nose, asking me what I, what I thought I was doing. Um, one of them ran off to go and get the officer who, uh, who, who was up in the position behind here. He came down, asked me what I thought I was doing, um, and uh, then he ordered his men uh, to start cranking 
the gate back up by hand. Uh, and, and I hung around and watched them do that for an hour or so. Uh, it didn't, uh, actually in that hour, it didn't come up that much, so I got bored and, and, and left. This is a, another part of uh, Perucha where they've got a mechanism here which is almost identical to the mechanism which uh, raised and lowered the spillway uh, in the small building on the bridge. And there was a stick, because it, it was actually a wheel at the time, but there was a stick through it, just locking it uh, closed. Uh, and that's the stick that I pulled out. And then what happens is the, the wheel starts to spin uh, as the weight of the water on the gate pushes it open. This was all burnt out, it was all black, uh, and clearly um, the, the motor had broken. But there's a manual backup up. So if you imagine they came to a mechanism similar to this, and they would have to turn this round, and if you move this wheel, uh, maybe 20, 30, 40 times, uh, the big, big cog, because of the gearing, would move one tooth uh, along. So you can imagine they've probably got to rotate this thousands and thousands and thousands of times in order to get that wheel to move around one revolution. Uh, and it's probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of revolutions in order to raise the gate again. So, uh, as you can imagine, it took them a considerable number of hours, six, seven hours, to get the gate back up. I think on the first day, um, you know, I, I surprised them by going to do that. I, I suspect that on the second day, you know, they were, they were still pretty relaxed. They, they probably didn't imagine that I'd do it again, uh, but I did. And we went through the same process and the same what do you think you're doing sort of questions. Uh, by the third day, they were wise to it. And of course, the moment I came on the dam, you know, people are trying to block off access to the... Uh, to, to that building to me so so on the third day I didn't uh, I didn't bother uh, and, and you know over the next uh, over the next probably four or five days I was able to get in there you know a couple more times and and release it and after that uh, they just gave up I, I mean I suppose it's, a, it's an interesting question uh, you know why didn't they stop me probably because actually they weren't that bothered Mirovne snage Umprofora sve su prisutnije i aktivnije, mada za sada bez naroštog uspjeha na kriznom području Sinske općine. Danas je prvi put u Hrvatsama boravio i zapovjednik kenijskog bataljuna, potpukovnik Francis Munuve. Iza zatvornih vrata uz prisustvo promatračkog tima Europske zajednice razgovara je s časnikom za vezu 126. brigade Hrvatske vojske. Do povlačenja, odnosno izvlačenja pješadije sa lakim naložanjem s druge strane, Također nije došlo, ali nam je sada obećano da će to početi danas. Kad će snaga umprofora točno preuzeti odgovornost na hidroelektrane Perlića, gospodin Munu mi nije mogao dati točan odgovor. Izjava predstavnika umprofora više je kurtuazne nego praktične naravi. Sve što tražimo je korektna suradnja tako da naša zadaća kao snaga ujedinjih naroda bude djelotvorna. Današnji sastanak bio je koristan, kazao je potpukovnik Munuve, istakavši da će se uskoro na kraju Hrvaca otvoriti prelaz koji će 24 sata nadgledati snage. On the day that the Serbs agreed to evacuate the dam and hand over control of the dam to the United Nations, uh, I came up here on that day, the 14th of September 1992, um, to just um, make sure really that they... Uh, they left. We came up with a team of about uh, four military observers to uh, evacuate the position. Uh, and it was here that, uh, that I watched them load up their trucks on that day, uh, form up and drive off down the road. There was a destroyed Serbian tank here that had hit a mine which had been planted under the road and it had destroyed the tank in the fighting before I had got here. The tank blocked this road 
And every time we used to come to this position to investigate ceasefire violations, we had to drive off the road to avoid the tank. And we took that path around the outside. It's slightly overgrown now, but at the time, it was a very clear path around the tank. And I must have come here, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 times uh, driving around this tank. And on the 14th of September, when the uh, Serbs withdrew from this position, I led them down this road and I drove around the track. And I probably got to about that position when the first Serb truck behind me uh, hit a mine uh, and blew up. Um, and the three Serb soldiers in the, in the front of the truck were, were killed immediately. The Serbs were really, really angry, really angry with us, the United Nations. We, we got blamed for everything. The uh, Croats uh, blamed for everything, Croatian army. And for a while, they refused to move. Uh, they, they telephoned higher headquarters for, for new orders, uh, refused to leave this position, refused to leave the dam. And it was very, very tense atmosphere for uh, two or three hours. Um, and then eventually the order came down to them uh, to evacuate. And they got back in their trucks, they collected the remains of their dead soldiers and moved off um, and it evacuated the dam. Uh, and then the Kenyan soldiers came in, uh, Unperfor was finally controlling the dam. This day was a big day for me. Um, with, under Mr. Matsan's tutelage, I understood a lot about the dam and um, the situation at the dam, the, the physical situation with the depth of the water uh, was very dangerous. Um, and we needed to be able to do something about it. And the most important thing that we needed in order to try and do something about it was control of the dam. I had a great fear when this incident happened that they were not gonna leave, uh, that this was going to just put a kibosh on the, on the whole movement. Ljudi nizvodno od Cetine, od dana kada je general, onda pukovnik Mladić zauzeo branu i kad je kod prve razmjene hrvatskih vojnika tu dolje ispod nas u Hrvacama biti najavio to i šta je u biti napravio da neće bira sredstva ako do toga dođe da digne branu jer on je vojnik. Tako u biti postoji u snimkama i tako dalje. I od tada su ljudi nizvodno od Cetine strahovali i ujedno su se i normalno, hvala Bogu, i branili i od tog momenta je u svima njima dole bio nekakav strah. Dođe li do preljevanja brane, pa i njenog rušenja, usred pritiska goleme količine vode u jezeru, prijeti velika katastrofa ne samo sinjskom području. Nadležna općinska tijela stoga od prije dva dana upućuju stanovništvo sela u neposrednoj blizini Cetine na evakuaciju svega vrijednog iz njihovih kuća. Ja sam 40 godina kupio zdravo u kući, sada koncu konza moram ostaviti jer nemam di se metiti. Ovo je najnužnije stvari, su mi ljudi dali metiti. Ko će se ovo metiti? Ko može se ovo metiti? Pa evo uvučem nešto, ću ostaviti nešto, ću uvučem i tako. Here we are in the inspection gallery of the dam. I only ever came in here once. We were very keen, we had heard the rumors, Mr. Matsan had said to us that uh, the dam was possibly mined by the Serbs and it was very important to the United Nations at that time to establish whether that was a fact or whether it was just a rumor. The technical reality is that if there were explosives in the dam to destroy the dam, they could only be in here. They, they, could, they couldn't place explosives anywhere else to threaten the dam, except, I suppose, in, in the water uh, in, in the lake, but that was unlikely. So if there were explosives on the dam, they were going to be in here. Mr. Matson had explained uh, to us how to get in here, and uh, myself and Captain Carlos Mars uh, from Brazil, who was a, a military observer on our team and was a military engineer by trade, uh, decided to come down here to see if we could find explosives. Jedna od obaveza vlasnika ovih brana i ovakvih opasnih objekata je bila da izradi se model na kojima se odsimulirao 
događaj za šire područje ako se brana u nekoliko ovih scenarija degradira. Zvalo se, računalo se da neće nikad brana nastradati od ljudske ruke. Naime, industrijske objekte je vrlo teško štititi i od tehničke nesreće, ali ako od ljudske ruke onda su oni praktički nezaštićeni. We came in and we came in darkness uh, because we were uh, concerned that they, uh, if there were explosives, that they were booby trapped and perhaps uh, rigged with a light sensitive detonator or something. Uh, and it, it would definitely be an ironic if we'd set off the very explosives that uh, we had come to, to identify. Jedan model koji je i nas silno uznemirio. Taj model je ako dođe do degradacije brane koja je malo vjerojatna, ali se može dogoditi u jednom scenariju ako počne do ako se jezero isprazni u desetak sati. Ako bi se ono ispraznilo u desetak sati, onda nije kritičan samo nivo vode koji plavi nizvodno područje, nego povratni vodni val koji iz uh, trilske klisure se vraća nazad. On se susreće sa ve, sve većim uh, protokom koji se događa, oko 20 tisuća kubika. Inače sad teče u maksimalno 120 kubika, a onda teče 20 tisuća kubika i taj povratni val, ja se ne usuđujem niti kazati kako je na modelu pokazalo se što bi sve bilo skvašeno. Znači, ovaj, nismo o tome željeli puno ni pričati. U nekim stvarima smo čak se u smirivanju situacije malo i sebi smo prigovarali. Dobro, smijemo li mi baš ljudima govoriti da se to neće dogoditi? We, we crept down the stairs in, in darkness. Um, Carlos led because he was a specialist. Uh, I was about a mile behind him, hiding behind everything. and we felt our way uh, through the tunnel until we hit something that we knew shouldn't have been there uh, and they were just big boxes. Carlos uh, very bravely uh, used a torch with a red filter to just try and establish what the boxes were. marked on the box was uh, the word UDAR, uh, U-D-A-R. We counted the boxes, there must have been sort of 15 or 16. We knew that they were a type of explosive, we just didn't know what. Okay, this is, uh, this is the place at the bottom of the inspection gallery, um, approximately where the uh, boxes uh, we found were, oh, they were placed here, right at the bottom of the dam. The place where it is the greatest threat to the dam itself. The effect of the explosive was to collapse the ins inspection gallery, which, as you can see, is about three or four meters high. Uh, and once the inspection gallery co collapsed, the dam settled in to fill the fill the gap, and and dropped by about three or four meters, um, because the spillway had been opened, and. Uh, all the water had evacuated and, and dropped the level of the dam by five meters. Effectively, once the inspection gallery had collapsed, the water level was still one meter below the top of the dam as it now stood. Uh, and that was important because the, da the construction of the dam, is a, it's an earthen dam. If the dam ever overflows, it will wash itself away and force the complete collapse of the dam. In the event, releasing water from the spillway uh, proved to be the, the critical activity in preventing the collapse of the dam uh, because it meant that there were five meters of clay uh, in the height of the dam. So when the explosives detonated, it uh, uh, fortuitously uh, prevented the, the, the dam collapsing so much that it washed itself away. Uh, so. In the event that uh, you know keeping that water level as low as possible saved the dam. Jutro su četnici sa brane Peruča potirali kenijski bataljon Umprofora koji je imao zadaću da osigurava tu branu. 
Zatim su četnici došli na branu i minirali most preko preljenog ispusta. već bila ranjena. Od dana je stupio jedan vrlo delikatan trenutak, mi smo bili zapanjeni da se to uopće dogodilo. Tada je trebalo otvoriti temeljni ispust. Ljudi koji su ovdje, oni su bili po položajima, doli su bili ljudi koji su otvarali temeljni ispust, bili smo u velikoj dilemi da li je on povezan u sustav mina. Tada smo se svi prikrstili, iako nisu svi bili vjernici, prikrstili smo se, sve je ovisilo hoće li tada odletiti u zrak. Međutim, Temeljni ispust je kao na paradi krenio i počelo je kontrolirano ispuštanje vode. su bili ljudi sa fotografije Ante Marunica, Dujo Grčić, Ante Pavić, Frano Barbić, Ivo Filipović, Injoka, Ante Župić, drugi Ante Pavić, ja Ivan Vrca, Dražen Grabovac, unutra je Petar Macan, inženjer Relja, onda nezaobilazni kojemu puno dugujemo, gospodin Vuko, inženjerac Ivan Vuko. To je isto jedan herojski trenutak koji pripada našim ljudima iz HEPA. Iza toga smo svi radosni opušteni kao da smo došli sa nekog čestitanja, jer tog trenutka smo učinili ono što nama kao struci zahtijeva i što su ljudi od nas kao tehničara zahtijevali. Ljudi koji žive ispod brane, oni su od nas kao tehničara zahtijevali i očekivali da mi o toj brani i o tom postrojenju znademo sve. I kad smo došli u situaciju, mi smo to i napravili. Iako se stanje na i oko brane hidroelektrane Peruča posve i potpuno normaliziralo, danas je na tom prije 15-ak dana od četnika miniranom objektu bilo veoma, veoma uzbudljivo. Ranjenu je branu posjetio njezin otac, projektant dr. profesor Ervin Nonweiler. Na pitanje jesu li strahovanja o mogućoj kataklizmi bila utemeljena, profesor Nonweiler kaže. U svakom slučaju moglo se očekivati najgore. Kad je bio visok vodostaj u akumulaciji, iznad redovnog vodostaja koji je projektiran, da je onda minirana kruna brane na odgovarajući način i mogla je nastati strašna katastrofa. Kada je Srbi detonirali dam, ja sam samo uvijek u domu. Ja sam uvijek u domu za možda 24 sata. I to je bilo jedna loga i hrvada sik mjeseca, veoma interesna sik mjeseca. I sam uvijek u domu deflated after a period of such excitement so I was um, sitting on the sofa in my living room watching the news when the news flash came up that uh, Paricha Dam had been been blown up by the Serb forces so yeah I was I was very concerned and you know to be frank I was uh, I was annoyed because I felt it was something that could probably have been prevented. Ljudi koji su radili na Peruči, Hrvatski 
Hrvatska vojska, stanovništvo, Hrvatska država, spriječili su da dođe do kataklizme iza toga. A sa strane Umprofora imali smo eto, gospodina Marka koji je poduzimao radnje koje inače od njega možda i nisu tražili vojna pravila. Gledajući ovako obilježavanje, kad se prisjećamo, onda ne smijemo zaboraviti da priča o Peluči je i za nas, i za Umprofor, i za Ujedinje narode, ali i za srpsku stranu zapravo jedna neuspješna priča. To je priča u kojoj dogodilo se sve zlo što je netko rekao da će učiniti. Dakle, zauzeta je brana, svjetski sustav, budimo realni, nije uspio Zakaza. ništa, na kraj je aktiviran eksploziv, ono što smo na kraj spasili, može se pridodati ljudima, svima koji su svili oko toga, ali zlo je ovdje izvršilo svoju misiju i to se ne smije ponavljati. Yeah. Uh, well, I agree with him 100%. I, you know, I... I've always been a little bit surprised that uh, that 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 uh, much has been made of my role in this when actually it's um, you know it's a story of failure not a story of success I mean the dam was destroyed um it, I guess it was fortuitous that uh, the the dam did not collapse and uh, you know uh, many people were were killed something Uh, definitely fortuitous, but yeah, I agree, it's not a story of success. Ako se dopusti rat, i naročito ako se dopusti dobivanje i ostvarivanje ciljeva rata preko rata oko opasnih objekata, svijet će ući u jednu spiralu iz koje će teško izaći. Na to smo svima, pa evo i gospodinu Greju i ostalima, stalno skretali pažnju. Ovdje se praktički izmijenila sva prva struktura Ujedinjenih naroda, osim Satiša Nambijara, praktički svi su dolazili ovdje, međutim većina njih je zapravo izlazila jednu nemoć da može utjecati ili ta silno oružje, silni obavještajni sustav od satelitskog da ostalog, na kraju je spao se na to da zamoli nekoliko lokalnih ljudi, jena i ostalih, ili će se makniti ili neće. Mi smo očekivali da će svijet učiniti nešto drugo. Pa eto, neka se i drugi nauče na ovome primjeru da rat oko opasnih objekata njega niko ne dobiva.